Good morning, everybody. It is Rebecca Oberstadt, and I wanted to record this before I wash my face and everything so that I could show you some video clips and some pictures of before and afters. And I'm going to be getting into allergy testing and uh, how, how to do an allergy spot test and where are the best locations and everything that you can do to test something out to make sure you're not allergic to it before using it. Now, I am a retired cosmetologist. My license did lapse in 2008 due to some health problems that I had. I wasn't physically able to work behind a chair anymore. So I had talked to the State Board of Cosmetology and they said that um, until my health improved, I could just let it lapse and then I could just send in my medical documents later to renew my license. So as somebody who's worked in a salon setting since the late 90s, we were taught in school and in the salon to do allergy tests on people to test to make sure they're not allergic to ammonium deglocalate from Perm Solutions, uh, the neutralizing agent from Perm Solutions, different various hair colors and lighteners. There are so many different chemicals in a salon. We basically are miniature chemists when we are in a salon setting because we are constantly mixing chemicals in order to create something that we want for a finished product. So I personally have uh, some neg negative reactions to things like ammonium theoglocalate uh, from doing multiple perms day in and day out from starting all the way going back to cosmetology school, school to being in a salon setting and constantly being around hair color, which also most of them contain, bless you, my cat just sneezed. Most of them contain ammonium theoglocalate and people don't realize that. So, Recently, a friend of mine had sent me some things from Scotland and we did a collab video and I did an unboxing with my dad and at the very bottom of the box, she had sent me the box of crayons eyeshadow palette. Because I had already seen Jen Loves Reviews video and Natty from Pop Lux's video, Natty had a very severe reaction to several of the eyeshadows in the palette. And they're not eyeshadows, they are pigments because they do contain non-FDA approved pigments. So I did look at getting this product back when it first released. I wanted it because of the color story, but when um, the videos and stuff started coming out, I was like, oh, maybe not so much. So I figured since I was interested in trying the product before, but I don't wanna have a reaction, I better do an allergy test. So about, Eight o'clock last night, I went ahead and did um, an allergy swatch test in three different locations. Uh, in the salon, they teach you to use the inside of your elbow on either arm to do chemical testing, something that's gonna be going on your head because you figure if you're going to have an allergic reaction, it's a pretty sensitive area. You can also do behind the ears. I have like purple eyeshadow behind one ear and I have like a brown eyeshadow behind the other. And then I've noticed when I use like face products like lotions and moisturizers and uh, cleansers and things like that for my actual facial skin, um, I've noticed that if I put products on my jawline, I can see whether or not I'm going to have reactions. So I started off and I did purple. Um, I, I have a, a swatch that I did here, a swatch I did here, and then I've got two swatches here. What I had done was I did swatch four different shades and some of them you can still see on my arm and there's two eyeshadow pans that literally just fell out. Before it was just one. Okay, so let's see if I can hold these suckers in. I used this brown shade, I used this purple shade, I used the white shade and I think it was this green here, the one that keeps falling out. I'd have to go back and look at the pictures. But I do believe, I, I know I used the purple, I used the white, uh, I know I used the brown because that was what it, I put right here under my chin. And then I think I, I picked the green, the green shade because I didn't know um, how many of these were mattes because I haven't swatched 
any of them. I was just doing a patch test. So I noticed that the brown shade that is right here, you can still see it on my arm a little bit. And I did take a, a separate video clip of this and some pictures. So I will be including that here in the video. But this brown shade, once I had put it on, I did the purple here. I did the brown, the white, and then um, it looks like I've got the tan shade here or the orange shade but I do know that I used at least four shadows out of the palette. I noticed that the inside of my elbow itched for probably the first five hours that it was on. And I went to bed at like three o'clock this morning. Yeah, so it was on, I put it on about eight o'clock last night and I was up till at least three this morning. That part of my arm, it isn't like swollen or anything and it doesn't itch now, but it did itch for several hours after trying it on my skin. Now, I know this came from somebody else. I know I haven't sanitized it or anything like that. I haven't put it really, I haven't put it on my face. I have put it on my jawline and behind my ears. Now, I have noticed that the ones under my jawline didn't give me any problems and the ones behind my ears didn't either. I've noticed from past experiences with products that I'm allergic to, and I will uh, link in the cards a couple of my other videos on allergic reactions. There was a moisturizer that I was using from a company called Pure Lease that I had a horrible allergic reaction to. I used their lip balm. I use their daily lip nourisher and then I have a couple of their sheet masks. I have tried one of the rice amino ones and I don't have a problem with that. But anything that says blue lotus on it from their line, whether it's the sheet mask or the moisturizer, I've had bad reactions to. But their other products I'm fine with. So I'm not sure if it's something that is in that product, whether it's the blue lotus or the French algae that they've got going in the product, I'm not quite sure. But I do know that there are like three ingredients that are in that product that I'm not, that I have not seen in the other products that they make. Uh, and the other products that I've tried from them, I don't have any problem with. So I'm wondering if it's one of those three things. And allergy testing, depending on if you get a blood test done, uh, can cost anywhere from $25 to several hundred dollars. Uh, also, De is determinable by whether or not your local lab can do those kinds of testing or not. So for me, 
I find it easier to do an allergy test sometime mid late afternoon. So you get a shower, you go to work, you come home, you eat dinner, you get a shower. After your shower, put the product on. Put it on your inside of your elbow, behind your ears, and somewhere on your jawline so that it's not gonna be like seen if something happens. Now I do have some breakouts right here along my jawline. I did a um, face mask one day and I ended up a whole, or I did a bunch, I did a clay mask, had breakouts, three days later tested out a new face mask, one of the sheet kind, and um, I think this is from the sheet mask because I've got, I've got them on both sides on my jawline. So that isn't from the eyeshadow. But what I find is, is that if you have freshly clean skin and then apply, apply it, and then go to bed. When you wake up the next morning, you can take it off the next morning like I'm fixing to do. And I actually have my washcloth in the sink wet. I was going to wash it off and I was like, oh crap, I forgot I needed to record this. But what I find is because you have had it on your skin for it, you know, at least 12 hours because you figure most people get six to eight hours of sleep, you're going to have the ability to see whether or not you're going to react to it. Now, in the salon, we do patch tests, patch tests for 12, 24 to 48 hours. So if you have a product that is put on your skin, usually the salon will ask you to come back within 24 to 48 hours to make sure. And to be honest, uh, I think I'm the only one that I've ever seen do an allergy test on somebody in a salon setting. And that includes doing like facials and stuff at a full service salon. I have never seen another cosmetologist do a patch test on somebody and then make them reschedule their appointment and come back 24 to 48 hours later. Because it's just, the salon system is just so in and out, in and out, in and out, rush, 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 that you might not have another spot open 24 or 48 hours from then. So you might not have the time for them to come back in just to get a patch test looked at. So I find that in the salon setting, it's not always a good thing. But if you've ever had like a, a TB test done where they do the bubble, they stick the needle in on your forearm and they do the bubble and then they draw a circle around it with a Sharpie or a pen and then you're supposed to wait several days as the bubble shrinks and then if it turns like red or itchy or swollen that kind of thing then um you know you're supposed to like write down when you first notice those things and whatnot and then when you go back to the doctor's office or nurse whoever injected the spot with the active form of tb to to test the it's like diluted tb but again it's to test if you had um if you have tb but what that test does is it reacts with the area around the skin. I have seen people that have had those tests done and their whole forearm swells up. I've never had a reaction to it, thankfully. Um, tuberculosis is one of those things that you really don't want to get because it'll kill you eventually, just like life. So there are various things that like if you go to certain places, especially like a spa where they're going to be using various chemicals on your skin or acid peels, things like that, that you really ought to have some sort of working knowledge on whether or not you're allergic to something before you go into a procedure like that. Because not everybody's skin reacts the same way to everything else. I mean, I could have a client come in for a facial and then um, say she's pregnant and she wants to pamper herself and she gets a facial while she's pregnant Well, she comes back after the baby's born and she's ripping her hair out and has no sleep and she just wants to relax and get a facial I use the exact same products on her the next time and she has a horrible reaction to it that can be caused by hormones it could be caused by a different pH in the in the system um, you're your skin does change just like our bodies do. They say like every seven years our body is supposed to change. There are things that I'm allergic to now that I wasn't allergic to when I was younger. So I take those things into consideration that a lot of people might not. So knowing what your triggers are, knowing what you might be sensitive to, knowing that you have a sensitivity to certain things. Like I know some people, and I know Jen talks about this in her videos, Bismuth oxychloride has a problem um, or it can cause sensitivities in some people, just like uh, 
uh, it's vitamin E acetate. Uh, tocopherol acetate is vitamin E acetate. It's a heated form of vitamin E that has been broken down uh, through a heat process that causes the molecular structure to break down a little bit so it's not pure vitamin E anymore. I know some people are allergic to that as well, just like some people are allergic to talc and mica, which you would figure because talc and mica are naturally occurring things on this planet that it would be odd that people are allergic to it. But then again, you've got people that are allergic to like pet dander and grass, like I have reactions to certain types of grass, um, of course, weeds, and I even know I, I know one person that's actually allergic to rainwater. Whatever it is about getting rained on, every time they get rained on, they swell up into hives and they have an EpiPen that they carry with them just in case. But yeah, you'd be surprised at what people are allergic to. So knowing your triggers and knowing what you have reactions with will help you out in the long run. And Hopefully this video gives you a little bit of insight on how you can test, where you can test, how long to test for, and if it's just a face cream or um, a, an eyeshadow primer or an eyeshadow or something like that, test it on the inside of your arm, on your elbow, the inside of your elbow where it bends, behind your ears and on your jawline, and you should know for not 100% positive, but you should know whether you're going to have a reaction to it. Now, the skin on our eyes is a lot sen more sensitive than a lot of other places. You can test something on your elbow and it's fine. You can test it on your jawline and it's fine. You put it on your face, like your facial skin or around your eye area and your whole face freaks out. So you also have to be careful about that. So if it's your first time using something, I recommend testing it, waiting six to 12 hours minimum, because sometimes you, you won't have an allergic reaction right away. Sometimes it takes a little bit for the reaction to show up, or sometimes you'll have an immediate allergic reaction where you have burning and tingling and swelling and redness and heat. So basically you've got erythema and edema at the, at the area where, um, one of one means redness and one means swelling. So if you ever go to a doctor and you're like, oh, well, they, you have erythema or you've got erythema, you know, um, erythema and erythema er, are basically redness and swelling in medical terms. And I will leave the definitions of those down below so you can read them. Uh, but yeah, if you have itching, swelling, redness, tenderness, pain, burning, any of those sensations while you have a, a product on, like I had itching on my on my inside of my elbow. I did everything I could not to scratch that sucker yesterday, but I didn't have a reaction anywhere else. So it could be the fact that I put a matte shadow in the very center of my elbow, but I put a shimmer shade next to it, and it could have just been the glitter particles from that white shade on my arm irritating it. So. I'm going to uh, sanitize the entire palette, spray it down with alcohol. I mean, it has traveled over 4,000 miles to get to me and I will test out one shade on one eye and one shade on the other eye and see how that ha uh, how it works and whether or not I'm going to have a reaction to it and hope and pray that I don't because, you know, doing uh, things with my face is kind of what I do here on YouTube. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully you guys have a great day or night wherever you are. If you have questions, leave them in the comment section down below, or if you've had an allergic reaction to a specific chemical or a product, feel free to comment down below because I'm always interested to see what people are allergic to because I know myself, I had an allergy test back in high school where they lay you on a table and they basically do a scratch and, scratch and sniff test on your back with a sheet. They, they lay you down and put a sheet on your back and scratch and then put active things into that actual scratch spot. Those are horrible, by the way. Good thing they have pretty strong straps on the table so you can't get up and itch them. <laughs> but my mom had one done and she came back with over 200 different allergies, so they did one on me. And let's just say I don't have a whole lot of surface area on my back. So yeah, that was fun. Anyways, I will see you guys in another video. Hopefully you have a great day or night wherever you are.